This is part two in my um, tutorial series about the Magic Q PC software. So this is just going to be a basic overview, a quick overview. I'm not going to get into uh, in depth about anything, but just give you some general ideas of uh, what we're looking at here. Again, uh, I hope you don't get too intimidated. Uh, this software can be as complex as you want it to be, or it can be as simple as you want it to be. I'm going to emphasize the simplicity of the software in a lot of my tutorials so that can kind of encourage you to go ahead and use this software. So let's just take a look at what we have. Take a look at the buttons first. Over in this location here we have various windows that we can bring up. So if we're programming or output or our setup windows or our patch windows and you'll notice that as we select these various windows they come up on the screen. One of the advantages too is you can do custom windows in here uh, this is my palettes window. Now I'm clicking up the top that I've saved uh, certain looks and I'm going to go over this in one of my tutorials about windows. But just to give you a quick look at it. For example, this is my Q playback window where, where I can look at light intensities and I can look at cues over here. So, and as you change the windows, the soft buttons as they call them around the edges here will change. Um, so you'll notice that, for example, if I'm in lights one or I'm in my mini wash and I happen to pr uh, click one of these and I'm in my color mode and I select a color you'll notice that all of a sudden some of these soft buttons uh, change so that I can use encoders by dragging these to change colors and if I'm in position my X and Y becomes my pan and tilt over here by moving the enc encoders so that's what I mean by the soft buttons would change um, so that's generally what happens there. Soft buttons change, encoders are along the edges. And you bring up the pages that you're going to look at there. Uh, this is some more different pages that you can look at. These are head selection buttons in here uh, that will select certain uh, heads and turn them on. Um, and we'll be explaining some of that as we go along. You may not even need uh, some of these buttons unless we get into effects on that. Down here we are looking at uh, buttons that are going to be used to actually record cues, edit cues, and uh, save and change things that you're doing. So, so when we get actually into the programming part of the uh, console, that's when we're going to be using these down there. And if a lot of you have used some of the old lighting consoles when you can type in program commands, you have that ability too using the keypad down here to actually, um, as a shortcut, type in commands. There's also a lot of visual selection available since that's kind of the world that we live in now. And, um, you know, for instance, if I'm working in my Q playback mode, I can actually go in here and select lights this way and program them uh, from, from a, a lighting scenario setup. We'll show you how to do that later. So there's a lot of ways of working with this. Again, I'm going to try to keep it very, very simple. Down the bottom here, we have what we call playbacks. So similar, if you would think of this as the lighting console that you've probably been used to that you would have a master playback section that you could use your you know go forward go backward keys for your go button and that's kind of similar to what this would be here um, so if I say go I'm actually running some cues now and you will see them come up and it's going to complete a lot like what you would normally see on a console the difference with this console though is that on the console you used to you probably had a playback and then you had a bunch of submasters or faders that actually brought up individual lights. In this case, these are all playbacks where you can play back different information and we can separate out lights. Um, so we can actually have our incandescents running here and have mover, movers here or LED lights here and be able to call up these playbacks from the master cue list over here. And I'll explain why that makes sense later. So what you're looking at here is actually a show I did, I programmed for Elf Jr. And we had some uh, movers and we had some LED lights involved and we actually had some snow machines involved. And I was able to put them on different playbacks. So especially the snow machines, if uh, you know I had, you had to climb up on a ladder and reload them all the time. So if I didn't want them firing off during a rehearsal, I could just turn their playback off. So they'd still be accessed by this cube when we actually did the show but I'd have them turned off like uh, during the show. So there's a lot of advantages to playbacks and you can actually program these some, some of these as submasters too. So in case you have some auditorium lights or 
hallway lights that you want to be able to control from the console. Um, you can program some of the playbacks to actually be submasters. So, so uh, that's pretty much it. It's a brief overview of what the uh, console looks like. And then I'm going to start getting into some actual detail about how you get things set up and how you progress.